I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will understand how to write domain and range of any any reciprocal function. There have been a lot of requests for such questions and I hope this will satisfy most of my subscribers. Reciprocal function we could write in general as f of x equals to 1 over x, right? Reciprocal x to the power of minus 1 or 1 over x. That is the reciprocal function. And uh, as you know, the graph of this function, let me sketch a small one here, is kind of like this. It has horizontal and vertical asymptotes, right? And that is how it looks like. It is always decreasing. You can see that, right? And these are two important points, which is minus 1, minus 1. This is 1, 1. Right, so let's say this is 0, x, and y. And as you know, domain of this function is uh, x belongs to real numbers. And there's only one restriction, which is horizontal asymptote, where we know that uh, oh, there's only one restriction, which is the vertical asymptote. I'm sorry for that. So x is not equal to 0. And this we find because of the vertical asymptote, right? OK. Now, as far as the range is concerned, range y values, you can have any y value except for 0. So we say y belongs to real numbers, where y is not equal to 0. And that is because of horizontal asymptote. The function approaches x-axis, but it is never there, right? So it is never at 0. So that is why in the range, the restriction is that y is not equal to 0. So that part is good. That's a parent function. We know most of it, how it, how to write domain. Okay. So, so that is the parent reciprocal function. And now we know that this domain and range has one restriction. That is, they're not equal to 0. For the domain, it is mainly because of the vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote is because of the denominator, right? Now, denominator, you cannot divide by 0. That is the reason x cannot be 0. And on the graph, it results into a vertical asymptote. And range is because even when x is very large, we approach a very small value, close to 0, but never 0. So therefore, in the range, y is not equal to 0. Now the question is, if we have functions like 1 over x plus 2, for example, or we have minus 1 over x minus 3, for example, or we have function, let us say, uh, 2 over x minus 5 plus 3, or we have 5 over x minus 1 minus 1. So for these different functions, how will the domain and range change? So that is what we are going to discuss now. So these are different reciprocal functions which have been transformed. How to write domain and range for these functions? There is a common criteria and that is for domain, we have to check that denominator should not be zero. So for domain, the strategy is check denominator right so so that denominator should not be equal to zero that is the strategy so that is the first part as far as the range is concerned we are looking for vertical translation for range what are we going to look for for range we are going to look for vertical translation Right. So, whatever this vertical translation is, that is the value which the function cannot have. Right. So, if there is no vertical translation, we know in the range, y cannot be 0. Right. So, this term, which is the main part of reciprocal function, can never be 0. Since this can never be 0, if I have plus 3, then that function can never have a value 3. And this function has minus 1, so this will be never minus 1. You get an idea. Now you can actually pause the video, apply these strategies. So first for the domain and then for the range. And find out domain range for these functions. 
Uh, let's write down one by one. So the first one here, domain, we say x plus 2 should not be equal to 0. That means x is not equal to minus 2. So you get the domain, right? So it is all real numbers, but x is not equal to 2 in this case. As far as the y value is concerned, since there is no translations, y is not equal to 0, right? For the next function here, we have x minus 3 not equal to 0. That means x is not equal to 0. As far as y is concerned, we are not shifting it up and down. So y is not equal to 0. This condition remains same. That does not change, right? The next function before us is the one where we have both horizontal translation and vertical translation. So in this particular case, x minus 5 is not equal to 0, gives us x is not equal to 5. As far as y is concerned, it is not equal to this value, 3. Now the last function for us is the one where we have Horizontal translation by one unit to the right and vertical translation one unit down. So now x minus 1 it should not be equal to 0. That means x is not equal to 1 and y should not be equal to that value which is minus 1. You get an idea, right? So that is how you can write domain range for all these functions. So we can start writing now here. So as far as the domain is concerned for each functions we'll write here and range again. Uh, for each function. We say x belongs to real numbers where x is not equal to minus 2. This is for the first function. y belongs to real numbers where y is not equal to 0, right? So this is for the first function, okay? Now for the next function, let me draw lines here. In this case, x belongs to real numbers so that x is not equal to, I'm sorry, this should be 3 bringing 3 this side, okay? and y belongs to real numbers where y is not equal to 0, okay? For the next function, x belongs to real numbers where x is not equal to 5 and ranges that y belongs to real numbers, y is not equal to 3. For the last one, x belongs to real numbers where x is not equal to 1 and ranges y belongs to real numbers where y is not equal to minus 1 correct so that is how you can write domain and range straight from the equation for any reciprocal function I hope this point is absolutely clear the restriction in domain is mainly because of which asymptote is because of vertical asymptote as far as range is concerned we are looking for horizontal asymptote right so that should help you to find domain range for any reciprocal function. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope this video helps you. Now you can look into domain range of rational functions also which is this one is also a rational function but a special case. So we'll look into more cases of rational functions in details in the next video. I hope that helps. Thank you and all the best.